1 Samuel 24 Now when Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men in front of the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheepfolds on the way, where there was a cave. And Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the inner recesses of the cave. Then the men of David said to him, Behold, this is the day of which Yahweh said to you, Behold, I am about to give your enemy into your hand and you shall do to him as it seems good in your eyes. Then David arose and cut off the edge of Saul's robe secretly. And it happened afterward that David's heart struck him because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. So he said to his men, Far be it from me because of Yahweh that I should do this thing to my Lord, the anointed of Yahweh, to send forth my hand against him since he is the anointed of Yahweh. And David tore his men to pieces with these words, and did not allow them to rise up against Saul. And Saul arose, left the cave, and went on his way. Now afterward David arose and went out of the cave, and called after Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground, and prostrated himself. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men, saying, Behold, David seeks to do you evil? Behold, this day your eyes have seen that Yahweh had given you today into my hand in the cave, and some said to kill you. But my eye had pity on you, and I said, I will not send forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the anointed of Yahweh. Now, my father, see, indeed, see the edge of your robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the edge of your robe and did not kill you, Know and see that there is no evil or transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against you, though you are lying in wait for my life to take it. May Yahweh judge between you and me, and may Yahweh avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancient says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom are you pursuing? after a dead dog, after a single flea? Therefore Yahweh be judge, and execute justice between you and me. And may he see and plead my cause, and execute justice for me to escape from your hand. Now it happened that when David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Then Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, You are more righteous than I. For you have dealt well with me, while I have dealt evil with you. And you have declared today that you have done good to me, that Yahweh surrendered me into your hand, and yet you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away safely? May Yahweh therefore reward you with good in return for what you have done to me this day. So now, behold, I know that you will surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hand. So now swear to me by Yahweh that you will not cut off my seed after me, and that you will not destroy my name from my father's household. So David swore to Saul, and Saul went to his home. But David and his men went up to the fortress. First Corinthians 5 It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and sexual immorality of such a kind as does not exist even among the Gentiles, that someone has his father's wife. And you have become puffed up and have not mourned instead, so that the one who had done this deed would be removed from your midst. For I, on my part, though absent in body but present in spirit, have already judged him who has so committed this as though I were present. In the name of our Lord Jesus, when you are assembled and I with you in spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus. Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, also was sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with a leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 
I wrote you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. I did not at all mean with the sexually immoral people of this world, or with the greedy and swindlers, or with idolaters, for then you would have to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with any so-called brother if he is a sexually immoral person, or greedy, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Are you not to judge those who are within the church? For those who are outside, God will judge. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves. Ezekiel 3 Then he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he fed me this scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your stomach and fill your body with this scroll which I am giving you. Then I ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said to me, Son of man, go now, come to the house of Israel, and you shall speak my words to them. For you are not being sent to a people of unintelligible lips or a difficult tongue, but to the house of Israel, nor to many peoples of unintelligible lips or a difficult tongue, whose words you cannot understand. Yet the house of Israel will not be willing to listen to you, since they are not willing to listen to me. Surely the whole house of Israel is stubborn with a strong forehead and a stiff heart. Behold, I have made your face as strong as their faces, and your forehead as strong as their foreheads. Like diamonds stronger than flint I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them or be dismayed before them, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, take into your heart all my words which I will speak to you and listen with your ears. And go now, come to the exiles, to the sons of your people, and you shall speak to them and say to them, whether they listen or whether they refuse, thus says Lord Yahweh. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard a great rumbling sound behind me. Blessed be the glory of Yahweh in his place. And I heard the sound of the wings of the living creatures touching one another, and the sound of the wheels beside them, even a great rumbling sound. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went embittered in the wrath of my spirit, and the hand of Yahweh was strong on me. Then I came to the exiles who lived beside the river Chabar at Tel Abib, and I sat there seven days where they were living, causing consternation among them. Now it happened at the end of seven days that the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, I have given you as a watchman to the house of Israel, so you will hear a word from my mouth, and you shall warn them from me. When I say to the wicked, You will surely die, and you do not warn him or speak out to warn the wicked from his wicked way that he may live, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you have warned the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered yourself. Again, when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and does evil, and I put a stumbling block before him, he will die. Since you have not warned him, he shall die in his sin, and his righteous deeds which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. However, if you have warned the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took warning, and you have delivered yourself. And the hand of Yahweh was on me there, and he said to me, Get up, go out to the plain, and there I will speak to you. So I got up and went out to the plain, and behold, the glory of Yahweh was standing there, like the glory which I saw by the river Chabar, and I fell on my face. The Spirit then entered me and caused me to stand on my feet, and he spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself up in your house. Now as for you, son of man, they will put ropes on you and bind you with them so that you cannot go out among them. Moreover, I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that you will be mute and cannot be a man who reproves them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak to you, I will open your mouth, and you will say to them, Thus says Lord Yahweh, He who hears, let him hear, and he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. Psalm 
Psalm 39, for the choir director, for Jeduthun, a psalm of David. I said, I will keep watch over my ways, that I may not sin with my tongue. I will keep watch over my mouth as with a muzzle, while the wicked are in my presence. I was mute with silence. I even kept silent from speaking good, and my anguish grew worse. My heart was hot within me. While I meditated, the fire was burning. Then I spoke with my tongue, Yahweh, Cause me to know my end, and what is the extent of my days. Let me know how transient I am. Behold, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my lifetime as nothing before you. Surely every man, even standing firm, is altogether vanity. Selah. Surely every man walks about as a shadow. Surely they make an uproar in vain. He piles up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I hope in? My expectation is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the wicked fool. I have become mute. I do not open my mouth, because it is you who have done it. Remove your plague from me. Because of the opposition of your hand, I am wasting away. With reproofs, you chasten a man for iniquity. You consume as a moth what is precious to him. Surely every man is vanity. Selah. Hear my prayer, O Yahweh, and give ear to my cry for help. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, a foreign resident like all my fathers. Turn your gaze away from me, that I may smile again, before I go and am no more.